It is 640, it is October 16th, it is a regular meeting of the Arlington City Council. My name is Rich Nagel, I'll be presiding at the meeting, and the uh, reason is I'm the mayor, so that's why. Um, we'll call a meeting to order, and we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Councilmember Batcher. Here. Councilmember Shevsky. Here. Councilmember Hedlestead. Here. Councilmember Hyland. Here. Councilmember Call. Here. All council members present, uh, also present this evening. On my left is Interim City Administrator Laura Alphabach. On my right is uh, City Attorney Ross Arneson. Um, also with us this evening, uh, Representing Bolton and Mink is uh, Jason Femright. Representing Arlington Enterprise, Kurt Mink. And also with us is our city, new city administrator in waiting, Mr. Pat Melvin. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with those introductions out of the way, uh, motion is in order to approve the agenda. Are there any agenda additions? Did we need a closed session? Okay. We can remove the closed session. Do you still want an update though? Yes. Or? Okay. Okay. It's just a closed session. Removed. And where is that? Number nine. 980. Oh. Okay. All right. With that in mind, um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move. I'll so move. Second. Motion by Councilmember Yashevsky, second by Councilmember Carl to approve the agenda with the one deletion. <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion's carried. The consent agenda. Oh. The consent agenda this evening consists of the following. Um, Item A, October 2nd, 2017, meeting minutes. Item B, approval of the bills. Item C, personnel agenda. Item D, application and permit for a one-day to four-day temporary on-sale liquor license for the Sibley County Relay for Life. Is there a motion in order to... Motion is in I, order. I'd like to make a comment first. The yes. personnel agenda is new. Um, to the uh, consent, consent agenda, and that's something that uh, the Employee Relations Committee um, re requested um, after our meeting this month. Um, it just pretty much gives an update on um, the employees and, and their anniversaries as they come up, so we're, we're aware of step increases and, and um, that sort of things. Maybe get a chance to wish somebody a happy anniversary on their anniversary. Okay, mm -hmm. is there a motion to approve uh, the consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. Motion by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Hadlestead to approve the consent agenda as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion <coughs> carried. There are no public hearings tonight, so we'll move on to addressing the council. Uh, does anyone wish to address the council? Hearing none, move on to announcements. Um, we just have announcement. Excellent. Yes, yeah, the, the fire department did host, hold their fall block party on Saturday night. Um, just haven't heard any final numbers, but just by observation, I heard that the numbers were maybe a little down. Um, and thinking that maybe the weather folks weren't Jeez. aware that it got that they had a backup plan in place. And then the other announcement <coughs> is the seventh annual Halloween Fright Night, which will be taking place on. The 31st from 5:30 to 7 along Main Street. Okay, um, move on to communications. Uh, three reports for you this month. There are two reports in a newsletter. We have the monthly reports for both the financials as well as the police report, and then we have the community development newsletter. In reviewing the financials, there was again nothing real out of alignment. Um, doing good on both the revenues and expenditures for this time of the year. Obviously having some um, vacancies has assisted that 
pretty pretty significantly. So we should do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 <laughs> so. All right. Any uh, questions on the communications? All right. If there is not, if there are none, we will move on to ordinances and resolution. Resolution 20. 2017-75, a resolution to amend the 2017 budget. Yeah, this is being brought um, forward to the council for their consideration. Uh, we have a um, grant with deed, and it just requires that there be a specific um, funding source. And so while the money is there and has been set aside it wasn't specifically listed on the budget as being set aside for that those purposes and so it's just to the change is in adding a line item to the budget for transfer in and then adding a line item for the transfer out so just to show where those those funds are are coming from and going into I'll introduce uh, resolution number 75 2017, resolution to amend the 2017 budget. Second. Council Member Batcher introduced resolution 75 2017, and it was uh, seconded by Council Member Hattlestead. And that is a resolution then uh, to amend the 2017 budget as explained. Is there any questions? Vote by roll call vote. Councilmember Shevsky? Yes. Councilmember Batcher? Yes. Councilmember Cowell? Yes. Councilmember Highland? Yes. Councilmember Haddleston? Yes. <coughs> All in favor? None opposed? The resolution is adopted. Um, move on to unfinished business. Item number <coughs> nine Johnson Controls update. Uh, the uh, attorney who's uh, looking at that. Uh, case for us uh, had requested some further information and Street Superintendent Weckworth uh, dug through uh, the files and uh, obtained some things for me which I emailed up to him uh, last week and uh, I uh, called this morning and uh, he wasn't in his office. I left a message that we would like an update and that if he didn't need anything further that uh, we were looking for some kind of a uh, written memo summary of his results or his recommendations um, and uh, that as soon as we have that then we can schedule a closed session to discuss tactics uh, in uh, uh, how to uh, deal with that uh, claim um, and uh, so uh, nothing new to report at the moment um, uh, the materials that he uh, wanted uh, clarification uh, about uh, had to do with some of the, uh, the failures and uh, a little better explanation of uh, the equipment. And, and we did have uh, uh, pictures <laughs> and, uh, and, and some technical uh, uh, reports from our electrical uh, consultant, uh, which I sent up to him. I think he just wanted to make sure he understood the, the technical aspect of it. Um, so um, I do have a reminder to call him again on Wednesday if I don't hear anything tomorrow. Uh, and uh, I think he should be pretty much done with his analysis. So. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the Sibley County Fair Utilities Work Session update. This again is the placeholder that was mentioned <coughs> at the previous work session in with, or in case the council did wish to take any action. So this would be the appropriate location for that action to take place. Okay. Um, it was discussed <coughs> loosely in the um, work session that with the fair board that we were looking at somewhat of a, a split on uh, installing that meter at the entrance to the fairgrounds. I guess my only question is from a city standpoint, how how is our budget looking in that department? Is there room? Is there? Are we going over budget for the dollars that we decide on? Um, I would have to look into that specific account. I have not done that, but yeah. I would assume since we have been running under in most areas, 
um, we could cover that or do a transfer if necessary okay. into that fund. Okay. <coughs> discussion. Well, I think uh, it was a good discussion we had with the fair board. Brought a lot of things to uh, to the surface, and um, I think uh, one of the things is so many. Uh, meters out there it's really hard to keep track of how much water is coming and going and who's doing what and by installing a main meter by the entrance of the fairgrounds I think will solve 90% of the issue so we know who's paying what right now we're, we don't know if they're paying too much or not enough it's just kind of a guessing game so um, by getting a meters meter there um, another one at the um, by the grandstand and racetrack, I think it's going to solve a lot of the a lot of the issues. Well, one thing I think we should add that I didn't mention before, because um, I forgot, is I think we should put it part of our agreement that they replace those covers on those two spots mm -hmm. that Lee mentioned, mm -hmm. right. um, because that was mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So I think that should be included as well. Okay, on the cattle wash stations and. <coughs> and I don't, um, the, uh, the one had the two holes drilled in it. Yeah. Where was the other one? There was one by the cattle wash and then the, the southeast corner. By the dump station. The the rabbit barn bathrooms. had one too, I think. Well, both, yeah, because water there, there had a plastic cap on the right. rabbit barn. But one. it wasn't the right size. Is that no, it, wa no, it was not sealed off. It was just off. sitting on top. It's just sitting on top and there's water over it by the rabbit barn. Rain comes off, comes up underneath. So we're probably getting it. Down, a, we're getting it down the sewer. Probably a three-inch cap on yep. the top of a four-inch yep. pipe. Or but it was by the rabbit barn. Yeah. yeah, there were three three areas. Two of wh one of which was corrected. One right. of which, two okay. of which need to. And the other one was that cover with they they had pop, Somebody popped two holes in. Mm -hmm. No, the dump station by the um, um, was it Porky's. That's really a handy handy thing to have for. People with RVs and those that are camping at the fairgrounds, that, uh, I use it quite a bit when I come in off the road if there isn't a dump station where we're at. <coughs> I know I mentioned to uh, a couple of people if they could make like a three foot square um, concrete pad yeah. that sloped into the drain. And most, most of the dump stations they have, they have like a four inch. PVC pipe with a screw in cap mm -hmm. and then uh, like on the RVs I've got a four inch elbow that screws into that so my hose hooks oh. to it so there's no chance of splashing when you're when you're emptying your holding mm -hmm. tanks mm -hmm. and I don't know how much that would cost to make a little pad that sloped in but I think it would raise it up just enough so any groundwater that's in the area would not go in there and then with a good cap it would seal it off but well, I need to put a cap like that on all the drains out there I think something that's threaded yeah we also talked about throwing a, a meter or having a meter placed on the Legion building out there um, a little thought about that after the meeting was um, what kind of meter do we put on there? That might be pretty extensive uh, cost, expensive cost for the uh, VFW um, with the... Legion, you mean? Yeah, Legion. 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 With the plumbing, uh, the way that it comes in. Um, whose expense? I was we wondering if, we, the if there was any way we could sit down with the Legion <clears throat> and get a fairly accurate number just charge them that number and eliminate this meter thing. I mean, I think that they know how much they use it, and if they're assuming would be honest and forthright with us. The only problem I see with that is we're we're metering everything, so Not we're gonna, we're going to meter. No, that'll still be metered because the water's coming in from the south. Yeah, but so we're not breaking it off of the fairgrounds bill. Yeah, but right, the fairgrounds is getting charged. The fairgrounds will get use. charged, and what if they're using twenty thousand more gallons than what they think they're using, or oh, whatever? No, I'm just saying, I think that you know, on a fair board, we would have to agree to that. 
I think that you know, that would be deducted from their annual monthly bill, quarterly, however they pay it. I'm betting they could get pretty darn close to what their usage is. I would think you could get awful close. Or the other option is be perfectly exact and we're going to have to spend. We'll have to see how much the cost is on that. If there's a, such a thing as a cheap meter that can be put on there to, I imagine there's got to be a, a way you can do it without spending a fortune. Aren't we eliminating some meters that are already out there? That is correct. Yeah. So About third, so yeah, a whole bunch of them. Why can't we just take one of so those? So far as those. Plumb the meter in. Yeah. Well, I think that's where they're But I think Lee costs. said there wasn't there going to be some cost involved in how that was going to be metered in because it came by the bathroom underneath and had a 90 degree yeah, elbow yeah, in, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the issue was the meter, the concern the cost. was the plumbing. The plumbing, the plumbing, the plumbing is going to be the, the installation part, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. which would be on the Legion. Well, I think. It kind of all ties in. I mean, even though it's kind of separated from the fair, fair board, it is tied into this whole project. So, Correct. Um, we, we definitely have to look at that at the same time that we look at what we're doing for the fair board, which I think we came up to uh, a consensus maybe that maybe 50-50 that we share cost um, they, they for the installation for the meter which would be um, under the circumstances of them being um, uh, paying for half of the 12, I think, 1,500 yeah. was the approximate um, bid for Which the bid were we looking at? It was the one for 87, 87, 87 plus 20, 38. and then plus 38. 38.50 or 38.15. Yeah. It's about 12.5 for the two. Oh. For the pit and for the meter. Yeah, it was 8,700 for the meter, and then that, oh wait, 8700 for the pit and 3815 or 50 mm -hmm. for the meter. Yeah. That was the yeah, the bottom number was the meter. The only reason I went with the 50% was we all know that the racetrack and the fair and the rodeo does well for the town of Arlington. Everybody in Arlington, all the businesses gain from that. And I really think that if we wouldn't have went 50-50 or 60-40 or whatever the name. We were going to be here next year sitting talking about the same thing, just like we did back in June. We were going yep. to have to offer something. Yeah. Well, back in June, I don't think we had a number as to what it was going to. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, yeah, we had, had those numbers? exact same we, numbers. It's just they didn't want to pay they, anything. Right, they were and I understand you start at zero and you're going to go up. But the other side of that is, is that let's say that you know, like Ross said, it was three years, and that's why I said the books are closed today when that deal is done. Because I don't want, who wants to come back here and keep going through a hundred gallons or eighty bucks worth of water? It's a done deal. Next year you get your bill. We know it's accurate. It's all over. And I think we have to resolve feels, it. Yeah. Everybody feels that it's fair, a fair yeah, compromise. Yeah, so. everyone that was commenting tonight seemed to feel it was. A, a, fair. a concern that I have is with our policy. I don't like to deviate from our policy. So um, is there a suggestion what we uh, lead with, Ross? Well, I think I can come up with some uh, of the eyes to ex explain for the future. Uh, you know, why we felt uh, this uh, required a deviation from the standard policy and that we were not setting a precedent. Mm -hmm. And we're not changing the policy as such. Mm -hmm. Well, among other things that come to mind that I can put in such a memo, uh, the fairgrounds is not a new customer. We have a very unique situation where they've been a customer for many decades, mm -hmm. just haven't had one central meter. Mm -hmm. You know that that's unique in itself. <coughs> and uh, since we're not aware of whether we're over or under charging them, I think it's a benefit to the city also to have this meter in place. Um, it really wasn't relevant to our workshop discussion, but 
I remain puzzled about this agreement that goes way back where the fair board was just paying us for 152 gallons every year. 152,000 gallons. 152,000 gallons, thanks. It's such an odd amount. There must have been some basis for it, at least at least some vague estimate uh, when that was set. And it was obviously it was a mutual agreement between the fair board and the city council whenever that was done. But uh, <coughs> no one seems to be able to come up with any, any records of, of how that figure was arrived at. And uh, I'm not so sure that we're overcharging them. I would agree. As, as some of the councilmen have mentioned today, uh, uh, I think the 152,000 gallons, once we have it all metered, uh, may be light. Uh, if you add back in, you know, what the, the racetrack is now being separately billed for. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all, you know, fair board in the past. Oops. Other comments? I'd like to make a motion that um, <clears throat> we enter an agreement with the fair board that on the water meter um, that the city participates on a 50-50 basis and that would be subject to the fair board approval for the installation of the uh, water meter and also that we waive the late fees on the current bill I believe was the discussion. Um, second. Can, I think we can, talked and about... And I just want to maybe add that we um, asked them to cap the three um, sewer inlets by the buildings so we um, don't have the infl inf influx of surface water into the sanitary sewer. I'll second that. Okay, motion by Councilmember Highland, second by Councilmember Haddlestead to enter into a 50-50 agreement with the, um, I guess it's a Sibley County Agricultural Association, to be proper, uh, for an installation of a main water meter at the south entrance of the fairgrounds. Also as part of that motion would be to waive the late fees that are currently due uh, from the September, I believe it's a September billing and also to cap the sewer inlets that were um, uh, illustrated with pictures at tonight's meeting. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion is carried. Okay, move on to new business, item number 11, approve or deny pay estimate number 3 to William Mueller and Sons. Jason Femrate from Bolton and Mank. Welcome, Jason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> In front of you tonight is a uh, contractor's pay estimate number 3 for the circle the improvements. This is, I would say, 90 plus 95 percent. Uh, of the work that's been done out there. I know they've done a little bit of seeding work and some final cleanup since we prepared this pay estimate. So you'll see another one. Once we get grass to grow, we should be able to close this project out. So um, any other questions on this from the council? There still be a retained though, 5% uh, retainage? Until we see the grass growing. Okay. Yes. Yep. I'm not going to finalize that until we see 70% coverage on which the, will probably be next spring, which will definitely be next spring. Yep So okay. um, and then past that we'll have a two-year warranty period on the on any of the improvements that they've done after we approve the final pay estimate I'll make a motion to uh, approve partial payment <coughs> estimate number three to uh, William Mueller and sons for $80,168.44 Second Motion made by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Cowell to approve the partial payment estimate number three to William Mueller and Sons, Inc. in the amount of $80,168.44. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed, no. <coughs> Motion carried. Item 12, approve DNI partial payment estimate number two to Jewel Contracting Company for $122,775.06. And this is a uh, contractor's pay partial pay estimate number two uh, for that project 13 tile 6A improvements, uh, which included uh, some of that rerouting of the county drain tile into the Freedom Drive storm sewer outlet, uh, lining that tile that we're taking over from the uh, watershed and also some sanitary sewer lining work, manhole replacement uh, that was pulled out of the 2015 project. This project is essentially uh, complete. I do have a couple of items that are still coming from the contractor that um, a couple of unforeseen items that were found out in the field that I'll be bringing forward to, uh, to your next partial pay estimate still should be well within our contingency that we've built into this project, but there was a, a couple of things underneath the ground that were found, so it's going to uh, slightly exceed the contract, but I'll outline that. They, they just sent that to me at 4 o'clock today. Uh, I have not had a chance to go through it. So, um, And then we'll, again, with this project, I don't know if we have much of any turf establishment, so we should be able to close this one out here within the next month or two. Yeah, there was a little turf uh, down the far end on, on um, yeah. Freedom Drive and Freedom Drive. They put yeah. in a manhole there, so they were in. Yeah, and, and around that side sidewalk. Yard. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. more than likely, just to carry this one yeah. over and get that yeah. done as well. The, so. the other thing that I'm concerned with is the um, pavement that they put on mm -hmm. the road, because that road was reconstructed or retarded. And you can definitely see a little lip. They're going to redo that or add to that if they need to as well. They will. And, you know, since that's that connection through there, you know, it was deep. It was a confined trench compaction in there. I think they did everything they could. You know, if there's some settlement in that area, it, you know, within our warranty period, we'll have them repair that. Okay. Yeah, you can tell that there's settlement already. Yeah. I drove it today, and I could see that something that... More than likely, let's let it do its thing and fix it once and be done with it. Right. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on that one? I do have one question mm -hmm. regarding the whole project. Is Are we um, paying the whole bill on that, or is part of um, the uh, township paying part of that watershed. bill? Watershed. Watershed? It's a 80-20 split. And who's, we're paying 80, they're paying 20, or? No, we're paying 20, they're paying 80. Um, the city let that contract. Uh, we have an agreement with the watershed that outlines the, them. We'll have to send them a bill for for that portion of it. They reviewed the bids when we received them, but that's all outlined in that agreement that uh, that we entered into with the watershed. So we're paying the bills up front, and then and then um, yep. submitting a bill to the watershed. They'll have they'll be reimbursing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They, they had indicated <coughs> rather than being. Well, I think they were indicating on their, they'll have a, uh, a new, um, uh, what am I thinking of here, storm sewer charge from now on, 45 46 bucks, whatever our maximum is. And rather than being billed every month, they said, just give us one bill at the beginning of the year, we'll pay the whole thing. So, so they will, they know that's coming also. On top of, on top of the their, 80 their portion is right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. okay, who's responsible for building the watershed? Is this something we do in house or? Yes, you get, you do. the city. The city will do that in house and make a note. Yes, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> make a note. <laughs> All right. With that, I'll approve the partial pay estimate number two to Jewel con Contracting Company for one hundred twenty-two thousand seven hundred seventy-five dollars and six cents. Okay, um, motion by Councilmember Batcher, second by Councilmember Havelstead to approve the partial pay estimate number two to Jewel Contracting Company for $122,775.06. Any further questions? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Item number 13, approved deny partial pay estimate number one to Nielsen Black Topping, Inc. in the amount of $76,206.63. And this is for the Arlington Cemetery improvements. This is essentially a majority of the work. I don't know of anything that's outstanding. We may have to fully measure the turf restoration and topsoil. Um, 
but again, we're in the same position as the other ones, going to need some grass to grow. But essentially, the all the pavements down, I know there is some damaged areas that they indeed did while they were installing the topsoil. Uh, we've met with the contractor out there, and they are well aware of it, and will be fixing those areas. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to pay partial pay estimate number one to Nielsen Black Thing Inc. Seventy-six thousand two hundred six dollars and sixty-three cents. Second. Motion by Council Member Batcher, second by Council Member Cowan to approve the partial pay estimate number one to Nielsen Black Topping Inc. in the amount of $76,206.63. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. And uh, lastly, then, item number 14, we... Uh, <laughs> should be funny. Uh, item 14, the 2017 Street and Infrastructure Project, updates and discussion. Jason? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 2017 project, just a little bit of a brief update. Um, construction as... Uh, essentially completed on all of the surface improvements. We have met the substantial completion date and I can go through some of the dates on this memo. Essentially what we have left for this year is uh, the seating and it's gonna be dormant seating. And uh, I'm expecting that work to be completed this week. And then the, the barricades can get pulled down. And again, this will be another project that we will uh, be waiting on final payment until we see grass growing. What I provided with you this evening in this memo um, is kind of just a breakdown of the construction milestones, opening up some of the discussion on how you wanted to handle the contract and the timing of when the contractor uh, actually met the substantial completion date. Uh, attached to this memo is kind of a full breakdown that uh, our RPR prepared of every day's work in the rain and when they worked and who was working uh, for your information. I'll just kind of go through this. Uh, notice to proceed was uh, signed on uh, April 24th. We held a pre-construction meeting on May 15th of this year. <coughs> Construction started on the water main looping along with some tree removals on May 23rd and the core of the project was started on June 5th. Rain days as kind of I, I broke down from uh, the indications within uh, Rob's reconnaissance of each one of those days. I came up with a total of six full rain days and four half days. Uh, this is for your information. Uh, if indeed we get into some discussion with the contractor, was this a wet year? Was this a dry year? Was this too many days? It's obviously a little bit of a gray area, but I just put this information in here for, for your information. Uh, the contractual Substantial completion date was September 1st of 2017, and uh, based on our, the actual substantial completion, which included paving, driveways, <coughs> sidewalks, curb and gutter, uh, essentially use of the driveways by the adjacent property owners, I think that was some of the biggest inconvenience to the property owners that are out there. If you're displaced from your driveway for uh, months on end, being able to drive on that and pull into the garage is a big deal. So that's what we consider substantial completion. The actual substantial completion was uh, the 9th of October. And under the contract, um, with the contractual date, in the actual date, I calculate 37 calendar days uh, past the, the contractual date, 25 weekdays uh, for your consideration as well. Uh, liquidated damages in the contract is $500 per calendar day, and that's uh, 37 days would be 18,500. Again, I attached a full breakdown of that. I'd like to open up some discussion and feelings from the council on how you want to proceed uh, with this um, with the contractor. At this point, I have heard I have not received any 
communications from the contractor um, on any reasons why it went past it. I've seen nothing on that. We've you know, prompted them as we've went through talking about their upcoming schedule and our RPR that was out there uh, diligently worked uh, with the foremans and uh, the project manager with the contractor on what their schedules were and uh, obviously it's taken longer than uh, what was allowed in the contract so just wanted to open it up for your guys' thoughts, comments, concerns and, and how you wanted to kind of proceed here. I guess I have <clears throat> two quick questions. Um, first, looks like, well, if you count half days, there's eight total rain days. Is that, that doesn't seem like a lot to me. Maybe, maybe, and I, then also, is I it? I wouldn't disagree with you on that. I mean, to me, that's, I, again, I, I haven't, and I was going to talk to a few engineers and see if there's any secret formula, nothing that I'm aware of as far as what is considered, you know, reasonable. I, I think eight total over an entire summer isn't too many i know it rained more in september than it did in any of those other days and i'm not including that because that's outside of our contract mm -hmm. and you know because right. we went past it and there's more rain days uh, i don't know if mm -hmm. uh, that's something point. That, right. that i've excluded from this okay. and then my second question um not being involved in too many street projects yep. Is, I mean, they work three Saturdays. Is that fairly normal that they don't work Saturdays if they're kind of behind or? It's, uh, they're certainly, they're able to work on Saturdays. Yep. I know when we talked about doing this tree project that it was very important that they get done in a timely manner because of the school starting mm -hmm. and being in the close proximity of the school that we wanted it done. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's why we put that um, that date on there, and they were very confident that before it's pre-construction meeting. I went through the meeting minutes, and their schedule was attached to that. At no time during the construction project did they provide me another updated schedule asking for more time. Officially, they did not. If they would have asked for more time, council could have maybe considered that. Uh, you know, through the project, understanding, you know, this or that, whatever they may mention. That was not, that was not provided to us. Do you see that typically, if that if that's the case, if they run into um, unforeseen reasons to that they know that they're behind schedule? I will see communications from contractors that they feel like they cannot meet those dates, and and maybe a reason or two whether they're valid. But I mean, they're, they're making their case, and I do see that on other opportunities when. That when they feel like they are going to go over, and I didn't see that here. Okay. Hmm. And not that it, not that it makes any difference. I'm just curious. In other years, when this has happened with charges, the contractor, and they got a little behind because of rain, had they contacted you before? The only uh, the only reason I'm wondering this is because the change. If this happened because of change of ownership. Right. Um, I couldn't speak to that. I I would have. To, I haven't worked. With Char, the only project was the Marion and Shamrock Drive project with them on adjacent to your property, and I don't believe did, we did go over on that, didn't yeah, we? But, but, yeah, but we, and there we, was we had rain issues. Yes, but they worked and, Saturdays, and we talked and about it and diligent efforts towards it. If we saw them out there working every single day, <clears throat> leniency certainly is. They uh, worked many nights over by me, right, until dark, right, trying to catch up. Yep. So. Um, you can see on the full <coughs> breakdown of schedule the days that uh, certain crews were there and certain crews were not there. So I guess that can go into some of your, your line of thinking. Um, as far as the change of ownership there uh, and approach, I guess I couldn't speak to that specifically. I just worried in the past if Charge is real good at it and they're not anymore. I mean, it's here they, nor there. They were, project. they were, they've been good to work with in past projects both in this community and other communities um, I haven't personally had as much uh, encounterings with them but I know a couple of other engineers that have and I've and and it's I've never heard of uh, no communication like this regarding you know at least requesting it you know I mean if they asked and we get these you know the open discussion about reasons you know we could maybe react to things differently because they're working on other projects doesn't really, that's not our problem. Right. right. 
I mean, we have a contract. We do. You know what, though. You're right. So. Well, speaking for the people that couldn't use our driveways, I think for a month longer than they anticipated, uh, you know, they that is an inconvenience. I mean, there's no no way about it. And what might seem somewhat insignificant, uh, seeding or grass that does make a difference if you seed it first of September, if you seed it the middle of October. I'm sorry, you're, it does. You're absolutely correct. That is, that is absolutely the best time to seed grass mm -hmm. is right on Labor Day. And we went past that by a full month. And uh, now we got into a situation where we get, have to dormant seed. And I guess time will tell how, how well that works. But uh, I'm disappointed in that also. Well, there's this, a... But this there's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of days here where they were done at five o'clock and five thirty and six o'clock when they could have worked much much mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And I know, like I said, over by me, they four, did to catch up and they almost down. got up. And it's like here, I'm looking at here. Why didn't you work later to catch up? Right. Unless you didn't care. <clears throat> Yeah. Didn't want to pay your guys overtime due to, you know, uh, it could be a company. Money. Well, that's right. They issue. save the overtime. It doesn't. I agree. This fall was extremely wet. September was. You can see those dates in here. Growing grass would have been nice. I was able to get grass to grow in my house, but that's a, <laughs> in the sidebar. <laughs> <You wouldn't laughs> and I'm just an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look how nice that grass would have come if the seeding would have been in there. There would have been a lot less watering by the residents that had to water it, and now you, you're on a hope and a prayer. And certainly a, a, another point, um, the RPR time being spent out there that the city's paying, that's, this doesn't cover all of that, you know, for the amount of time that they're out there. So certainly that has to come into account, the extra days that he has to be out there uh, due to them taking more time mm -hmm. is, some of, uh, is certainly a, a, a reason for so the max we can charge is the 18.5. We can't recoup any of that last thing you just said. That's just an expense that we have to. Have. Well, this helps to offset some well, of those right, costs. But we can't exactly go right. over and above and say we had him. All this is in the contract is the, is the 500. Right. And, and, we, and, and, and liquidated damages are outlined in this contract so that we don't get into the nuances of we've had this expense, this expense. Right. We agreed at this contract, both the city and the contractor, that if we go over, this is the number. Future projects, we could consider other numbers if that's the wishes of the council. Right. Um, this is where we've been in the past on these. And uh, um, so in, in future projects, if we want to talk about adjustments to what we feel is appropriate on liquidated damages, um, I definitely have that conversation. Well, I say it once in a while. I'll say it again. I can't vote on this, but I would certainly uh, not see, uh, not like to see that 18.5 lowered at all. I think uh, we're, we're due every bit of it. So. I would agree. <coughs> Do, uh, how does this money get dealt with? Does it do any of the residents get some? That's a good question. What happens to the, eight, you know, say we, I mean, how does this 18.5 impact what we collect from Comes him? Comes off or, the project cost. Or the residents, I should comes off the entire project cost. Okay. You know, we would just be paying them, we'd be holding 18.5 uh, in retainer when we're paying that out at the end of the project, the city just receives okay. that benefit. And to individual residents, it really doesn't affect them at Unless this Unless you point. wanted to go back and recertify the assessments, right. which right. we've talked about, you know, in the past project. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking too that there were, um, you know, six full rain days, which kind of put them behind schedule. But then I looked; there were several days where no crews showed up at all. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I know they're probably working on other projects that needed to get done too. But uh, I heard from a couple of residents: uh, how come the, they pulled the crew off and nobody's showing up? Well, I mean, it was like gone for a couple of days here, a couple of days there, but. If you're working there 100% of the time, you know, full days, I think the consideration by uh, the city may be different. Yeah. And but they it, weren't here. They weren't, no. I have no, to it's agree, with have the, the, agree with the mayor that the 18.5 is. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, I guess, do we need a motion? Yeah. Are you looking for a motion? Yeah. That would be great. Yep. Uh, yeah. I'll make a motion to, um, I guess, stick to our contract and yep. um, for 
charge the 18.5 to charge for the late substantial completion date. I'd second that. Clarification? Sure. Is it complete? It is, the, it is substantially complete. Okay. The final so completion the is out in June of next year. Um, we can address that if we get to that. Yeah. And that's a different, that's 250. The substantial completion is the biggest thing. You know, it's using the, the improvements, being able to, it, to use it functionally. The final is the punch list and the final wear course. So that has 250 per day on that. So if we have to get into that, we'll talk about that in June. Okay. Let's see, they were pouring driveways today. I there was an outwalk I saw for today. I think all the driveways were done. I think this was. Oh, the, that the full driveway. The apron up to the driveway or something. Oh, somebody, Nancy was putting in a new driveway. Oh, is that right. what it is? Oh, yeah, okay. she, she decided past to put in a new the driveway. sidewalk. Yep. Okay. So that's outside of this. There was a look like an outwalk. She said that today. new sidewalk made her driveway look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it does so, that, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> All right. We have a motion by. Uh, Councilmember Cowell, second by Councilmember Handelstead, to uh, uh, impose a liquidated damages in the amount of the $500 a day, 37 days, for a total of $18,500 to the, uh, was it UMG? Is that what it's called? <coughs> OMG? OMG. OMG contractor. Okay. Any further questions or discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> one, uh, just one quick uh, item. I had a, um, I don't think we ever discussed this publicly, but I had uh, someone come up to me and ask why they were seal coating a certain street that was actually put in in the 2015 project. Mm -hmm. Can you give us sort of the timeline of what happened? I mean, now we have this project done. Yep. Next summer they'll come in and put another wear layer on. And then... The year after, would it be uh, appropriate? It's to put a year on? after. Yes, that's one of the most crucial seal coating uh, opportunities. Is the is immediately after. You cannot do it right after the wear course is put down. Otherwise, we make it part of these contracts. But realistically, it doesn't make sense to hold a contract another year right. for right. seal coating. But that's the most critical time to get that oil into that wear course, and that seals up that surface. And that's one of the most crucial. That first times one. the yeah. first time mm -hmm. so it seems mm -hmm. like we just paved this road why are we seal coating it because yeah. that's we're getting that new asphalt into that surface and it really seals it up and that's and, and protects that okay. brand new investment okay. so and then once we get past that then we'll get on our normal seal coating cycle but right. but uh, the year after the wear course gets put down you need to have some of that wear uh, and weather on the wear course for it to really accept the seal coating, otherwise we put it down right away. If you put it down right away, it'll start to strip right off of it. Oh, so. okay. All right, you explained it very well, thank you. I have another question. He does so that. now that we're wrapping <laughs> up this project, uh, where are we looking for our next project in a couple of years? Have we decided that yet? Or have any target areas? I know one, that one on Dayton down, Street. Down me. Yeah. Hmm? The one down <coughs> where uh, Aaron Venner lives. Not oh, Aaron. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Venner. And Clinton, and Clinton and Baker. 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 Yeah. Baker and Clinton. The drainage, drainage issue the there. The drainage issue there. We did some... <coughs> preliminary. We did some preliminary review. We did some televising in that area. And I will, I, I should be providing an update on that. I owe that to you, I, I believe. I don't think, I, I spoke to the mayor mm -hmm. And I, and, I, and I thought we did, but I don't believe that we did formalize a, a review of that. We've done the, the televising, and I have a, a preliminary review of that, but I will bring uh, a memo forward in the coming months just kind of outlining what we found there and uh, steps forward in that area. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Jason? Thank you. Three hot dogs again next time. I was going to say, yeah. you got a hot <laughs> dog and I, I could really go for each time. <laughs> Pepsi or a Mountain Dew or something, Jason. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You can bring pins to other people, but for us, we're All right, move on to business. Uh, council committee, council member committee updates. Are there any? 
police committee, and I don't know if there's anything other than maybe everybody knew there was a conditional offer made I didn't know to that. a new candidate yeah, or possible employee, mm -hmm. and the person accepted. She accepted. She. I wasn't <laughs> going to go that far. She accepted <laughs> and is now going to do her background and all the, you know the game. Mm -hmm. So that is, we had nine candidates we interviewed. Uh, I don't know what the number was. There was probably three pretty good ones there. You know, there or was three or four, four good ones, yeah. and it was such but a... The scale uh, kind of stood out. Yeah, it, it was an amazing difference. Everybody in the room that day, we, th we questioned whether we were going to have to come back and pick three or four for a second review, or if, we could, if it was possible. And three-quarter of the way through, I said, I think we're going to be back. When this scale got done, I think everybody agreed there's no coming back. She looked very good. Outstanding. Very, very good. That's about it for the police. Yeah. Was it the woman that name was on? The personality job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Uh, Sarah. 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 She's from, I think. Polish guy. Mankato. 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 Yeah, something along that line. <laughs> yes. You would be a, you, you would perk up with that one. Does that make, well, we won't ask that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was offered the job at like 10.30 that night, and yeah. she was already in the office that morning to fill out the background report. So she's eager. Very, she's excited. Just as excited to join us as we are to have her. So. Yeah. Great. That was really cool. Cable Commission, I might as well go there. Um, I'm still working on some things. I'm learning more every day with the help of Laura and understanding a little better where all this money is coming from and where it's going. But I'm not, I'm far from done. Might yep. be another month. Yep. That's it for me. Um, the Parks Committee had a short meeting, had basically two or three items that were discussed. The um, first item was uh, on, on the Lion, you gotta say the name right. Lion Center. The Lion Center. There was a, a water fountain that was take no longer going to be used, and and the park committee wanted would like to use that water fountain out at Sportsman's Park because there's nothing nothing there, and so um, Kirby thought that would be possible. Um, there's <coughs> there had been a, a water line underground <coughs> going to the, I think there's a well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, next to the, the, the shack. In back of the shack, I think there's a well. Yeah, and, and there was a water line going all the way to the and, back, and back stop, I think. Yeah, there is. So, uh, so somewhere, you know, huh? put, in a, no, put, in this, put in this water fountain for, for players. Close to the dugouts and whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, because of the need for protecting the bases and the pitcher's mound and uh, and what other rakes and whatnot, they need some storage facility, whether it be a shank, a shack, or, or a big box, and then locating it. You know, they thought on third base line, but that might be in the way of fans and uh, other stuff on the first base side, but that's farther away from the gate that will get into inside the fence. So that's something that they would like the council to consider putting in soon because we invested into that park and we'd like to have that storage area there. And uh, let's see. That was a shack. And then the last item was uh, for the the Buck Thomas sign that we have. He, they would feel it can't be seen with the background it has. Jerry Ebersviller said that Jim Peterson works at a plastic company and he could get a sheet of plastic white plastic with black letters so that Buck Thomas Field could be more easily seen. And so they would like to do that 
sometime in the near future. Oh, and then, I'm sorry, I misspoke. There was a complaint that the, especially the Four Seasons Park is intended well by the police uh, well enough because uh, the last, there are parties out there with lots of mess left behind, bottles and so on, and so that needs to be patrolled that more carefully. Four Season or Sportsman's Park? Four Season. Four Season. Yeah. But there was an incident earlier yeah. this summer, and there was another incident about a week ago. Are these people renting the facility or just hanging out? I think they're just hanging out. Back in, it was in the large shed, you know, the open oh. shed. Yeah. Yeah. Had nothing to do with the newly remodeled building. We might just have to have Chief Pedersen patrol that area a little more often. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, it's not out of the realm to talk about some cameras, especially. Uh, Every time I drive up there to look at how, how things are looking at the uh, Lions Center building, newly remodeled building, I think, oh, if I find a broken window here, I'm going to be, you know. Um, I know the, who was it? Someone mentioned to me about the time that was wrapping up. He said, you know, you put all this money into it. He said, be ashamed to cut corners and not put up some security cameras to they're monitor. Cheap. They're cheap yeah. enough. Yeah. So... Just food for thought for the council to maybe want to get some cameras up around there or you sign it. You can even have these cameras set <coughs> up so yeah. that I have one like this that sits in the woods and when a critter or something walks by and it takes a photo, it comes immediately to my telephone. So that could be sent immediately to the chief. Yeah. It'd be, I mean, you'd have to send it to one phone. You wouldn't want to be switching. There's no, too much work no, in that. No, no. But you could send it to the chief's phone, and he would get that, that picture immediately when someone went by that camera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it's that fast. That, and those cameras are a little more expensive. You're looking at you got to buy a SIM card and this and that. Probably in three hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Boy, they'll give you everything you want to know. Yeah. We'll have to. Uh, that, that something to talk about. Fun. Fun broken window. Well, one broken window and you've covered it. Yeah. That's yeah. correct. It's if you catch one guy, you paid for the camera. We'll have to confer with the chief and have him but take a look and yeah. see what he I thinks think we need down there. I think we should because have him look into the security of some kind. Maybe yeah. he has some, some yep. sources. Because mm -hmm. these new cameras are unbelievable and the pixel quality, everything. I mean, they're good. You could, maybe not the $39 models. But anything over eh, 100, 100 and a quarter is pretty decent. They got pretty good distance at night, and they take very good pictures at night. Maybe even the incoming, the uh, city administrator in waiting might even have some information. He might. Like <laughs> he might have a cup on his trunk. He'd want to donate. We'll go outside. I'll tell you. A few. <laughs> <laughs> McLeod County will never miss <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Ben, are you, is that, yes, that that's was, it? Okay, that's it. all right, anything else? Um, we had a, a planning and zoning meeting. We uh, looked at the zoning map. Uh, she's gonna bring it right back to us. We had some more suggestions regarding the zoning map. So that should come to us next month. Uh, we're talking about rental code and how we wanna uh, get there. So that's pretty lengthy discussion that we've been having there. And um, there's also uh, updated on the small wireless facilities and public right away. So um, those devices are placed on um, not really the right of way, but like on our lights, right? So they're not technically in our right of way. They're attached to our light posts or signs. Uh, they're like small wireless facilities. They're like little antennas or what do they little do? Transmit the signal oh. so that you get better reception, I would imagine. Um, but with nothing in place, we, we, we can't charge them for being on our posts. I Who, mean, who's putting them on? Uh, smaller wireless companies, I believe. 
So um, it hasn't come out this way yet. It's more focused in the metro right now. I think that's where the companies are are uh, tackling first, but I'm sure shortly <laughs> they'll come out this way. So so we own our utility poles, I would take it, that mm -hmm. are in the city proper. But yeah. if they're not on the ground, they're in the air per se, mm -hmm. we can't charge them rent, we can't. Well... That's what they were saying with this right-of-way. That's what she was saying. Right. Well, I think maybe what they're implying is if it's in the right-of-way, we have a lot of rules and regulations that uh, uh, govern uh, who can use our right-of-way and uh, what standards they have to meet. We get to charge them, etc. Uh, we just wouldn't have a, a rules structure for this kind of thing. You know, where would we start? You know, deciding uh, who could put things on our light poles, who couldn't. What would we charge? And, and I think it's a good idea to get out in front of that. Because I know uh, back in the Stone Age when I worked for the telephone company, <coughs> that's still when we had wires and a cord on the phone. Wow. Anyhow, if you know, the when was that? <laughs> <laughs> if if. NSP owned the telephone pole, and <coughs> Northwestern Bell wanted to run a cable on it. They had to pay rent on that pole, mm -hmm. or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there was kind of no free lunch. Well, I just like to keep track of all that. You know, God, I don't know how they <laughs> did it. So I know I'm sure there's a way that um, we could figure that out. And I wonder if uh, League of Cities maybe. Has something on that? Yeah, it's it's so new that I don't think anybody's uh -huh. really Ready touched on it yet. I but think I think this came through a webinar from the League of Minnesota yeah. Cities. I think they're they are kind of watching it and have been providing some guidance stuff. So I do think they'll be a good resource for us. It's almost like the drone thing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I think us and Saint Bonifacius are the only ones that have. Mm -hmm drone ordinances and St. Bonifacius gets all the publicity. <laughs> <laughs> and we also had an employee relation committee meeting and I touched a little bit on, uh, or we've seen in our agenda underneath the consent agenda, uh, one of the things we talked about. Um, we also talked about pay scales um, and such, so um, I don't think we're ready to bring anything to the council yet. That's still under discussion, um, but that's what we, we chatted for a long time about. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot more chatting. <laughs> a lot more chatting, yes. Last uh, Friday, I uh, escorted our new police chief around up and down Main Street for three hours and uh, uh, very, uh, had very good discussions with business <coughs> owners and, and um, uh, it, was, it was extremely worthwhile and I would invite uh, uh, Mr. Melvin that I'm gonna do the same with you. I would, I would love to do that. I think it's, it's beneficial to everyone involved. Um, I did find out from our new police chief that when he steps into some buildings on Main Street, he has no radio contact at all. Hmm. There are some big, big, what I would consider serious issues there, um, that he does not get radio signal. Really? Because yep. of that structure? <coughs> Well, he had mentioned he was visiting in uh, with Attorney Arneson, and he had his radio sitting right on the table, and the sheriff's office tried to reach him three times, and it wouldn't come through. So he set his cell phone up. So he set his cell phone up, that case. So I'm, I'm, I'm just saying there is some serious, we, we need to get after that. Uh -huh. Whether we need a repeater on the water tower, or whether, we, I don't know. I don't know what we need, but that is totally unacceptable for someone in that position to not be able to communicate at all times. Right. So, so just food for thought for the near future. Okay, any other items to discuss? I have one. Yes. Uh, especially this past year, we've had a lot of issues with maintaining staff. Do we do an exit? survey when they leave and and I think it should be shared that information shared with the council so when we're hiring somebody we can anticipate 
but um, there have been an awful lot of changes here that could we have controlled or done anything about? Yeah, good point. I believe that there had been exit interviews, the last two did not. But no, I believe there's been some formal exit interviews, and in the last couple there's been some informal communication just as far as. Because, um, you know, if, we're, if I'm interviewing somebody for a position, I want to know about the things that may turn them away before instead of after. I think that our last employees that left, we had no control over anyhow. I, I don't disagree with Ben. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as far as lies on down, I don't think there's anything we could have done to keep them. I mean, we had just given Jordan a rather large raise. Mm -hmm. And I think his goal was to go to Carver County could have added five more dollars to that, and I think we still would have lost them. Same thing with Trevor at the start. Who knows what happened there? <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. that was just a weird deal. Well, you know, I think times have changed. It's not, it's the generation, the young generation now, they get a job and they're all excited about it, and the next day they're starting to look for the next best, best thing. Mm -hmm. And that's just... Everybody. That's just how it is now, and and you don't have the lifers that you hire and you think you're going to have for 40 years. You you just don't. Um, it's just a different way of thinking than what than what we're used to. Um, and that you know that's one thing in the employee relations committee that we're talking about is you know uh, what motivates people. Money motivates people, sure, to get to the top as fast as they can. You know, and we made that adjustment with the police uh, or the police department and. You know, we're, we're looking at our other departments to maybe do that, to have that be something that holds them here or a, encourages them to stay longer because without more experience, they're not going to be able to go anywhere with make, you know, without making the same amount of money. Take a pay cut. But if they do want to climb the ladder and go to bigger and better things, we're, we're small, I mm -hmm. mean, in, in the grand scheme of things. <coughs> and we're always going to be that stepping stone, that learning block for if that's the route that they choose to go, you know. I, you know, I agree with everything that you said, but I think we still, in exit interviews, I do think they're yeah. still important. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People are For sure. Still, still no, we should know why. Mr. Melvin, has it been your practice to conduct exit interviews when you have employees leave, or how do you feel about that? It's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just count on that and get what you can. And, yeah. you know, if they were a better person, more capable, and more qualified. Well, I know some of the classes and what have you they, they've gone to over the years that, you know, money is not the top, top priority of most people. Usually money comes in about third or fourth on the list. And it's, you know, job satisfaction, being appreciated, being wanted, other than on a poster in the <laughs> post office, but, <laughs> you know, feeling that you're part of the organization and you want to, you know, people want, want, you, want you to stick around. So I know, the, you know, we can throw a lot of money at people and sometimes that's not, not what their, their primary motivator. Right. I think every time I talk to Kirby or if I email him, Annie or Lisa, whoever, I always thank them for the job they do. I always do because you know what? You don't think it's much, but to, to the person receiving it, it means a lot. Yes. Yeah. That little thank you, you're really doing a great job. 
at least they can take a little pride in what they're doing instead of, how come you did it that way? That was wrong. I was at a uh, function, I can't remember, one of the breakfasts or something here at, uh, one morning and I, or Sunday, and uh, Kenny was there, and I went up to him and I says, you just do one heck of a job of keeping that park looking good across the street from me. And I thought he was just going to rise off the chair. I mean, he just... <laughs> but they'll probably bring him back next year. <laughs> Pardon? They'll probably bring him back next well, year. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, because he does do a great job. Oh, God, he does a great job. But, and I think the more we tell them, you know, everybody's always ready to jump on a guy when he doesn't do a good job, but sometimes we forget maybe to commend a little more when they are doing a good job. He says, I'm not as fast as some of those younger kids, but I, I tell them that the grass cuts a lot better when all four wheels are on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Good discussion. Good comments. Appreciate it. Awesome. Is there any more? Did I, I just got, uh, go ahead, Jim. Did you have something? Yeah, real quick. But, go ahead. Um, I don't know. I'm sure everybody read the paper, the Green Isle. Um, I was talking to some a representative from Fahey Auctions, and they are looking for land for rent. So I'm not sure if we have anything available for their auctions, but uh, they are oh, looking okay. and they are interested. They'd be interested to come in Arlington if we have something. Because the the Green Isle deal is sort of pushing them out, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. That's that correct. That's part of the deal. If that goes through, it did go through. It did go through. Yep. Yeah. And what is that? Well, uh, Green Isle has a, a new business. It's a cabinetry shop that was located in Hamburg, and they've signed a purchase agreement to acquire one of the Green Isle Industrial Park lots and build a new building there. But one of the stipulations of the buyer was that the city um, not renew Fahey's uh, yearly lease to hold four to six machinery auctions in the industrial park. He was concerned about uh, you know, the mud in the streets and the, the traffic and the coming and going and so on uh, disrupting his business. and. Uh, after a lot of discussion, the council decided long term it was more important to have a new business located permanently in town as opposed to uh, foregoing the yearly revenue from the Fahey auctions. And the Fahey lease was a year at a time, and so there's no guarantee that Fahey would continue it, although they've been doing it for a number of years. Um, so, however, uh, it's, it's a done deal, but it's not done done. <laughs> there are certain other contingencies where um, uh, you know, the, the, the actual sale of the building may not take place. I'd say there's a high probability it will, but uh, there, there are still some contingencies that have to be reached. So, um, I think in Green Alpha, he was looking at, was it six? Six thousand a year. And they were six thousand and six and six. Six auctions, auctions, but they've only been doing four the last yes. few years. And, um, they're there about 10 days each auction, so about 40 days a year. They use all the local businesses for gas and batteries, whatever. So mm -hmm. it could be positive if we have enough land somewhere for them. That would be well, the I question. mean, we have that right. our industrial park that's just sitting bare land right now. I think it'd be a perfect spot for them yep. to... Well, the problem is uh, access. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. We don't have that yet. We don't have it yet. And they, I, did, <coughs> they, I did mention that, and they'd be interested in seeing what it is. And, you know, I told them they'd have to build a road, but... Right, um, right. But we also have some farmland adjacent to town, too. That right. A couple of parcels. Yeah, so they are interested in if we have something to offer. Yes, Pat. I'll just say, uh, Jim Fahey has an uh, office in uh, Clinton, which used to be in Hutchinson. But uh, he, he has a couple assets in the community, very involved and supportive of uh, the county program for entrepreneurs. So yeah, I think Jim Fahey would be the role. He's a great person to have involved in the community. Yeah, and I would agree. The relationship with Green Isle has always been fine. Mm -hmm. uh, that isn't why they, you know, voted to terminate it. It was, again, <laughs> you know, pay yeah. auctions or or new business located in town. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the the final consideration was, uh, you know, the city had put a lot of money into acquiring the land and putting in infrastructure, not as an occasional auction site, but as you know, a development site right. for businesses. Right. I guess their hope is they get a, a second new business in there. You know, there hasn't been one there for quite some time. 
and that might generate Draw more. Draw a third and a fourth. Yes. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and jobs. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. um, is there a way that we can get Holly to look into um, contacting them and, mm -hmm. yep. and uh, showing the property that we would have available yeah. yep. that would be ready to... <coughs> All we need is a road. Yeah. Are we working on that yet? All we need is access. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> there is a road there to the I, industrial park. We could start negotiations any time as far as, I mean, they, they actually own the property, don't they? Mm -hmm. Northland Drying, so. Yeah. I, mean, oh, I think we could start talks any time. The thing is, is that we don't necessarily need infrastructure for them to go out there. Right. right. Mm -hmm. All that they need is a field that they can get to. There's a yeah. road to our property. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, the access that we would need is that gravel road that's already in place to go to the industrial park. Mm, well, we need the no, road but going you need, out to it. You need the, <coughs> our industrial park is out in the field. I mean, there's Northland Drive. You need to add a leg to the, the, leg right. to that. the south. Uh, yeah, yeah the I mean, and gravel leg or something like that for the time being would not cost us a lot of money. No, but I, I mean, you know, yes, infrastructure is <coughs> great, but you're talking. No, I'm <coughs> not talking infrastructure. I just, we need the access right. to that 22 right. acres. Right, right, yeah. And then the, the money we get, the city gets, for renting the property as opposed to what we could get for holding the auctions there, because you can't have an auction and crops on the same property. Yeah. No. Let's see, I have real short yeah. crops. Yeah. <laughs> 22 acres or three, that's, yeah, that might be about a wash. We got 250, 300 an acre? Yeah, probably two, yeah, almost 300. That's so almost 280. Yeah. Pretty cool. Wasn't the high 200s last year yeah. for the yeah. community. Yeah. yeah, and somebody will spend money in the community. Bring, right. Right. Yeah. right, yeah. I mean, Bringing that's, somebody even if it's in yeah. kind of outweighs the, outweighs the, is the there contracts that yeah. we have? This is year it just to year, a year to year, year contract? Year. Annual. Okay. Yep. Okay, any other items? Yes, I just have a couple. <laughs> I'll be done by 1030. <laughs> I can't remember last week that I talk about the tourism thing I attended in yes. Henderson. Well, oh, I shouldn't say yes. Maybe you talked about it in another meeting. We were both. <laughs> I don't think you brought the council up to date on it. Oh, um, anyhow, a couple, three weeks ago, there was a tourism summit. summit down in Henderson at the event center down there. And <clears throat> I don't remember all the things, but uh, Amy Newsom kind of put the thing together, did a great job, had speakers from uh, Minnesota Tourism, uh, Explore Minnesota, some people from the university. And kind of my takeaway was that if we want to do something with tourism or attracting people to town, there's a lot of resources out there to do it. And we just have to knock on the right doors to, to, um, get, the, get, to get help doing that, advertising money, whatever. Um, you know, and of course they were using Henderson as an example with their, with their Tuesday night roll-ins and their sauerkraut days and hummingbird hurrah and you know, bringing the people in. And I got to thinking, you know, we don't do too bad in Arlington ourselves. You know, we bring <clears throat> 10,000 people plus to Arley Dazzle. Um, we have our breakfast on the farm that brings a lot of local people in. We do have the bull riding event that brings a couple thousand people in. We have the Arlington Raceway that brings 800 to 2,000 people on a Saturday night. You know, so you start, they are, all on Main Street, like Henderson is to speak, but we're bringing a lot of people into town. Um, you know, one of the crazy schemes I had, not schemes, those are really a well thought out plan. Um, but the crazy part is right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we have, the city owns some acreage and you, we need, since I can't get the water park, we need people to come <laughs> out to town and uh, you know, on the corner of Highway 5 and County Road 9, we have the acreage there. We could put in like a, a, a prairie, a re re restoration prairie with trails and a little building and an and a interpretive center and have a reason for people to stop by or to come out. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's right up there with the water park. But I mean, it's, 
I got to think outside the box a little bit. Just, uh, you know, what can we do to have uh, Arlington as a destination rather than a place to drive through and hope to God you don't get a speeding ticket from the local cop, you know? <laughs> um, so anyhow, which brings me into my other topic. Uh, this weekend I had the golden opportunity to go to Elma, Iowa. And uh, a good friend of mine was getting married, so we went down for the for the wedding on Saturday, came back on Sunday from Interstate 90, we turned south on Highway 56, just a little east of Austin. And I started noticing along the highway, there's a bike trail. And it looks like a relatively new bike trail. And it kind of weaved in and around trees and telephone poles and kind of up and over ditches. And it was like 20 miles. And then it hooked up with a, an abandoned railroad right away. That's a, another trail. You know, it was almost 40, 50 miles of trail. Now my question was, how did they get permission to use that highway right away for their trail? And it wasn't fancy. I mean, it was black topped and that was about it. But it, you know, kind of we, it was kind of looked like a nice trail to ride on a bicycle. And why couldn't we do something like that from Arlington to Gaylor, Arlington to Green Isle, or both directions? and then take off from Four Seasons Park down to Henderson. You know, that would bring or even north. a lot of people around town. You know, it's, you know, and I know that the, um, the southern Minnesota down by Lanesboro and Harmony, mm -hmm. and that's just all bike trails and tons of bikers down there. And um, they really rely on, that brings a lot of people into their towns. Yep. So I know the trail committee is kind of inactive at this point, but I would sure like to see them look into that a little bit. How, how did that community, or how did that get, how did that start? I'd have to look on a map and get the, and I think Leroy was one of the cities, which is right on the Iowa border. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple other smaller towns, and you know, looking at the towns, they could use, they could use the influx of people to help keep them alive. Well, if I, rem yeah, if I remember when we first started, or when the Prairie Line Trail first started, um, we did. We had uh, members from all of Sibley County, all the communities in Sibley County. And um, for whatever reason, we, we raised the money and we put the leg in out to the Sportsman's Park from, from in town on Freedom there in 17. And, and then it was like the, the committee fell apart. So, um, uh, did all the legwork, did everything like that. It's probably still intact. Yep. However, it's just dormant. And um, and yeah, it, that was our grand plan was to do, I think we had trails mapped and everything. Um, uh, way back we were ta when we first were talking about doing the trail, um, the railroad wasn't being used. And that was one of our, we set mm -hmm. our sights on. But um, the process takes a long time. Um, it's almost frustrating in a way because you're like, well, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, really, it takes a long, long time. Um, and the fundraising is really, really difficult too. So, um, but, but yeah, you have to have people that are driving and pushing and pushing and pushing. Right. <coughs> when I was in Shorewood, I, I lived right next door to the Milwaukee-St. Louis Railroad. And when that was abandoned, um, I was pretty active in the Snowmobile Association, the Southwest Trail Association, and myself, another fellow, we went to Hennepin County who purchased that right away from the railroad. And we got permission to use the railroad from Excelsior to Victoria. And we just got a bunch of guys together from the Snowmobile Club and the, um, some bicycle people, and we made the trail. You know, we hauled gravel in, it was, and it, it didn't cost the club paid for some of the stuff, and guys had bobcats and and tractors, and we graded the trail and kept it groomed. And you know, now I think the county or the city has taken it over. But you could ride all the way from Hopkins all the way to Victoria on that trail, you know, and, and it was it's a very nice hmm. trail. Still is a nice trail. Well, so I mean, we did it with a lot of volunteer work, you know. And I'm thinking 
everybody and their brother has a bobcat and a pickup truck and a dump truck in the area, you know. Get some of those people together. If we can motivate them to do something, get the right away from Arlington to Henderson or Arlington to, to Gaylord, we could eat that trail on a Saturday afternoon. You know, mm -hmm. I think it could be done. The Sibley County EDA discussed this exact subject eight or nine days ago at the last meeting, and I got numerous emails today on a trail committee being formed to do exactly what you're yeah. talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was just going to add that. Mm -hmm. I think there was, I, I don't know how many emails I got today, because I, I couldn't read them all. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them in regards to that. They are discussing that in more than just chit chat. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, if we can talk to the um, highway department, you know, and it, it was Highway 56 going south from I-90. And it looks like that trail was just done this year. So hmm. whatever is in that quadrant from the highway department, it's got to be fresh in their mind how they how did they, it, you know. It. And I'm sure there was probably some grants and aid trail money available and county money and state money and perhaps volunteer help and whatever, but I, I don't see why it can't be done. Well, that, that's how we got the trail in Arlington. I mean, there, there, it was grant money and it was matching funds. And with all, this, with all the um, uh, safe routes to schools money that we put into our sidewalks and all the other uh, the um, rehabs that we did, the sidewalks in the community, that all went, you know, towards our match and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great thing. I mean, it, it, that brings people into your com community more than cars. It really does. More than used I mean, cars? Well, more than cars. <laughs> more than <laughs> oh, I people talk through. Used cars. Oh, no, no, more than vehicles. Shot. You know, there's well, the, the reason I'm saying is that they're going to stop and take a break when they get to your town. You know, it's not necessarily yeah, that they true. need fuel or they need a, uh, you know, stop at the convenience store or stop. But when they're on on bike or mm -hmm. on foot, I mean, absolutely, Just they're going to stop and maybe stop for them, yeah. absolutely. Well, this and spring, maybe take time to tour your your community. Mm -hmm. This spring, I was went into Kicks Bakery on a Saturday, and there's like a dozen <laughs> bicycles lined up out front. You know, and all, everybody's in their biker gear, which you just don't see every Saturday morning in Arlington. And so I struck up a conversation with with uh, a couple of the people, <clears throat> and some were from California and Seattle, and they met, I can't remember where they met, but they were riding to Milwaukee or Chicago, or maybe even out east, and it was like a 30-day trek. Oh, cool. And... It was it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. I gave him my card. He says, "Give me a call or send me a note when you get to where you're going to see if you make it or not." I never heard anything, so maybe they didn't make it. <laughs> 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 you know, they're probably in lacrosse and they can't figure out how to get across the river. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a pie shop down by Lanesboro between Lanesboro, Lanesboro, and I can't remember the name of the town. Uh, Houston. There's a little. Little town. I mean, it's maybe four buildings, but there's a pie shop right on the trail. And from what I understand, they can't keep pies on the shelf. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's sure. what you know. There's a couple B and Bs there and stuff like that. But you know, that town is noted for pies. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in fact, Larry Kicker was in the shop today. I'm rambling on, but this is kind of cute. There was a. Um, lady was visiting with Chris and introduced her to Larry Kicker. And she, oh, you've got Kicks Bakery. She says, our, her husband's daughter lives in Denver, Colorado or someplace, loves Kicks Bakery. So for a prize or for a present for his daughter, he goes to Kicks, gets an assortment of rolls, and overnight FedExes them to Colorado. It costs them like $200 you know, to get these. <laughs> And of course, Larry's standing there popping the buttons off of his shirt, you know. Well, Senator Klobuchar does the same, the same thing, thing once a year. She yeah. has uh, Kicks Bakery items FedExed out to her in Washington. Yeah. So, so anyhow, I mean, it's, well, I had my, I had my uh, motorhome over at Sam's Tire in, in Glencoe a couple months ago, and they did a great job for me putting tires on all that. So I gave you know a couple extra bucks. I said, "Here, guy, the, buy the guys some donuts tomorrow." He says, 
we don't have a bakery. You should have brought some for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought uh -huh. of that. So, but anyhow, I think the trails, All right. I think, is, is something that could, oh, good. It it could happen. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can visualize that it can happen. Well, good. Anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Would you? Second. <laughs> yes, I will. No, okay. Motion by Councilmember Haddleston, second by Councilmember Batcher to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Meeting is adjourned at 810.